Hello, John Dilworth here. <clears throat> We're going to have a little deviation from our howl, howling routine. I'm going to fulfill an obligation to a donor, someone, someone who donated um, to Howl If You Love Me, and now I have to create this premium for him. It's a very good premium. And his premium choice was courage, of course. It's always courage, most often courage, and screaming while holding a sign that's going to say a thing that the donor wants. And he wants it also to be bugged a big take, and this is what I love, I just love doing big takes. So I'm just roughing this stuff out, and there's the eye sockets, right? That already I know I want to do, eye sockets. That's the sign, but then you got to have the eyes blowing out here, and this one perfect here. I don't know if you could see it all, <laughs> but um, it may be off camera. But the composition, I, I like my compositions to fill the entire size of the paper. And this sketch is only eight and a half by 11. It's a standard. And his mouth is going to be open like this, right? And maybe and I love doing this old gag where his tongue splits. I love his tongue splitting. He can't talk. He can't, he can't say the things he wants to say. And so it might as well be tongueless. And of course, this lovely... I was always infatuated with the edge, the surface of a tongue. Cats. Maybe perhaps it was the cats. I'd have to think about it. My dear sweet Suavidad, long dead, brain cancer, within a week. Terrible thing. Lovely cat, though. He actually thought he could outlive me. Uh, he had a very bad attitude about that. I can always fix this. I'm going to develop this later, but I already like what I'm seeing. A little piece of flesh here. I'm going to do the same back here. And... Courage, I think, if I look back at the original drawings, and I have those, I have a few in my, my own personal collection, from the Chicken from Outer Space, he's not that far off. I mean, I've kept it pretty clean and consistent, and the model, the model for Courage has always been important to me. And when we were producing Courage back back in the day, I had a formula so that we could meet our deadlines. And the formula was that I would accept 70% of what I would do, 100%. 100% is dilly, but I would accept if you did 70% of what I would do as acceptable so that we can meet our deadlines. And that's what happened, and that's what it did. So nothing's perfect. You get a show like this, a show like Courage had maybe 300 support people, all you know, in Taiwan and in New York, and our great, great friends in Atlanta and in Hollywood. So all that, all that matters. All of that matters. And then, of course, this beautiful tooth, and. As everybody knows, this hole represents the dog's spiritual deficiency. And what's ironic is he had the most, well, conscious spirit. The most conscious spirit. He was the most alive. His, uh, his sense of consciousness was greater than the limited greed of Eustace and the enchanting oblivion of Muriel, both of which are 
ways in which to avoid reality, but not courage. He didn't need any tricks. The only secrets were in his mind. And that is what prevailed in the end. He was not a coward, although what a world. What a world for cowards. And I guess we just do the best we can. Courage did the best he could. And yet he always prevailed. The other good thing about courage is that he, he lacked any kind of real organs that could get damaged. And that's, again, that's the myth we were talking about. I was talking about this earlier. I mean, I really, really, me and people and other colleagues like William Hohauser and there's a bunch of others that really get the necessary absurdity in life. Well, the absurdity, but it's, it truly is. I'm developing this as I'm speaking to you. I haven't thought it out. We must be able to laugh at ourselves. Must. We will perish if we take this all too seriously. And I'm not going to bore you with other things that I've been doing and learning right now. I'm going to have to cut this sign off or make it wider. And this is something that we could do always, always when we're doing our layouts. And I'm going to clean this up, of course. This eye here and this eye. <laughs> See, I'm just slapping at my own stupid red line. And this red line also, I guess, it'll be up for grabs if there's any collectors who like this kind of uh, discovery. Yeah, just get in touch. And love, love to circulate it all. And all of it is towards how all of you love me. So I'm, I'm jumping off into different tangents. And if you were here sitting down with me drawing like animators do when, oh maybe I should maybe I should do some crazy let me see maybe his, his ha, 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 that is funny maybe this one's a looper so anyway you see we get ideas let's change colors let's see if we can change colors because that helps us create and so what becomes, what becomes of Broken Heart? So that I love, that I love, yeah. I just want to, let's get fluid, like my friend Fluid, from Fluid Tunes, who's doing some wonderful things now with his own art. And we love that. We love when we're our colleagues and friends and allies who do well in very, very difficult times. And here we are. So these are the little things I can develop on my own without harassing you with my excursions into madness. So, right, I was on a, ta I was on a run, and I kind of liked it. I forgot what we were on about. It was courage, that virtue of courage and how it comes to us, how it comes to us. If you read The Hero with a Thousand Faces by Joseph Campbell, and I recommend all animated filmmakers, all of us, read that book. That should be part of your curriculum. If I had a university, I would need like lots of money to, for that kind of thing. Uh, but I would start, I would put a world mythologies and comparative religions from the beginning of our ex our adventure our human adventure and get us and get an understanding a deeper understanding of how we got here but more than that what has resonated throughout the millennia among human beings that we have experienced the very same traumas and crises. Uh, 
for what is it? The er, what do they say? What do they say? The earliest cave shrines is from the cave bear, the cave bear, and they say to what two hundred thousand years ago. So you're saying what? What is that? What's two hundred thousand years? It's like twenty minutes ago. But there it is. And the fear. Fear was there. And you could see how superstition then, you don't want to say that, but the belief in something, something else. You just don't know. You just don't know. So my belief would be in the absurdity. Cartoons. And animation. And characters, people, who exhibit qualities of profound amusement and a joy, like little wise people, like little, I'm not saying Buddhas, but even better, these Zen, Zen cats that can laugh, like Alan Watts. Here's another fellow that's just so amazing, absolutely on the curriculum, because they help us in animation. You don't know how until you start studying and reading them. Insights into character, motivations, what compels us to do the things we do. And they're universal. Universal, there is another concept. I was, ha, <laughs> it's like a piece of meat. I should put a, ha, 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 what? It's not, ah, maybe his tongue. You know what? we we'll go to another color. It, because I like when it's clear. And this will be clear. And it's supposed to rip. So we want to make sure his flesh is going that way. Because that's gross, man. <laughs> Maybe it's not so gross. I have seen, uh, there are artists, fans that are sending me stuff that I am so impressed with. I mean, wow. Wow. Such creativity. And I'm s proud, proud to have done anything to help that along. So there is a tongue adjustment. So easy. This is going to be so easy to clean up. And the sign... I guess, let me see, how could, <laughs> it would be funny to have his, his hand just cross over his, and I'll do that like this, right? So everything's still clear. And then this side, he's going to hold this thing with his tiny little hands. Now, these fingers, the way I draw them, are exactly the way I drew the, my, my cat, my cat. Swabidad, all those hundreds of thousands of years ago. And I just, bar I just moved it over to courage when I was doing the chicken from outer space. That's, all, that's how simple it is. Uh, everybody, you do your own. You do your own kind of courage. So I'm going to, I'm merely going to blow this stuff out here and make it weirdy, weirdy. I don't know what else to say. It's the midnight hour. Okay, a little update on how then we have been. I've had a wonderful patron, a, a, a Christian, wonderful man, and he's been helping me along, helping us with our production. And he's got us harmony, but we're having problems installing it. And it's been a week trying to install it, working with the people, good people in Canada. It's nothing to do with them. It's the way technology is. The way technology is being planned. And uh, really, just you've you got very little options now. You do exactly what the manufacturers want you to do. You upgrades every 20 minutes. Hardware upgrades, software upgrades. Now you can't even own anything. I mean, uh, I'm sorry. Right. The idea is that we're not to own anything, but somebody does own it, right? So, oh well, I guess that's the new business model. And little spit bombs, right? I'm going to put little tiny cookies, Easter eggs, in this drawing. Also, I also I, I love doing that. And then I'll get I'll get very intimate with these drawings, and some of these things will just get distorted. Only because it's fun to distort things. That, it doesn't, that doesn't matter. And I never put a navel on courage. 
but I'm going to do it now because why not? Um, Bag. I, there's an artist. What's his first name? Underground artist. Comic. He's great. I think it's Bag. I think I'm. I think I'm being influenced by him. What's his first name? I wish I knew. I'll have to remember that somehow, someday. So this is it, and this is this little thing here, a little sign. Uh, maybe I'll give it a little edge, you know, on a lower thing, just to give it dimension. And wood, right? So what's what's it painted on? Wood. We love wood. So wood is, has this texture, little pieces, and a knot, maybe. You know, that's extra stuff. That's that's what we like to see. A piece of wood, like the wood you use for gallows when you have to hang the unjust and diabolical. I never thought of hanging Eustace. What have we done to him? We've done everything to him. Not really. We could still do much more. It's always fun delivering punishment to the naughty. Right? Isn't it? We know it is. That's why we love doing it. And then... We could also punish ourselves. It will be a two-for-one. Okay, so I think the next stage is just to go ahead and clean this up. Unless we wanted to get creepy-creepy with, with the, eye, the eye stuff. And I think we can do it little veins on this thing. I have no idea. I should really look into what all this gangling, gangling stuff of eyes are. Because maybe there is m more, I'm just, I guess I'm lazy. I'm going to confess right now that I just want to rely on the absurd. So it's the absurd. Oh, I didn't, this is the reason why I wanted to do a uh, video. Happy fall. Happy fall. We made it through. We made it through the summer, depending on where you are. Maybe it's happy s spring. Right? What is fall, spring, fall, winter, so right, that's right, spring in some places, right? For us, northern hemisphere, it's fall and the coming winter. What, what can we expect in the coming winter? Right? Okay. Fight Club. We don't talk about Fight Club. All right, this, that's that. That's just so weird, weird, weird. I don't know what to say. Uh, what else could we do? He could tear his... Wouldn't that be amazing? And then he's just got like BVDs. <laughs> the comic book artist, Michael Perlstein, he really, he really got me hooked on the idea of BVDs. These little underwear the characters wear. I mean, I know I put, I tried to put, I wanted to put Eustace in BBDs. These little jockey panties that boys wear. And I guess where girls can wear them now too because they're very uh, fashionable. And, but instead I put them in a uh, boxers. 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 All right. There it is. I'm not doing anything more. Well, you know, and the rest is the veins. When I do veins, I like to do, give myself little guides for the eyes, uh, like circles. Well, they are circles, right? Well, just something to give me curves. And then I'll go in knowing how the veins should come up. You know, to give it the illusion that I know how to draw. And that's all it is, the illusion. And thank you. Unfortunately, I'm a bit of a fraud because I, I'm not really not a good draftsman. And it would be better if I didn't draw at all moderately because uh, it's caused, you know, well, a little bit of chagrin. So here's the veins. Yeah. <laughs> oh, my God. I don't know. <laughs> what is that? I don't even know. I'm just now I'm getting off on the late night and having a chat with you and I, I really do hope everyone had the most one I mean what a what a summer one of their best summers and even better for the, all the limitations of it and the stress 
So we're looking forward. So Anthony Cohen has already got, he's making a pencil test of the last three scenes that I hand animated. He's doing that as we speak. There's no more in-betweening at this stage. Now he's just assembling those three scenes. And when they come in, I'll make another video and share what that looks like. Because when we transition to harmony, it's going to be like the old, the old days of goose and high heels. So I just have to do this, that, and not a mess. Until next time, stay animated.